We're on lesson 3.3. Corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. Um, this is some prerequisite information you'll need to know before we get into our congruency statements for triangles, or our congruency theorems, that is. And so the big idea here is that we just need to be able to identify which parts of the triangle relate to which parts of the other uh, triangle that is congruent to the first one. So um, some of you, this may come naturally, but to those of you whom this doesn't come naturally, uh, we'll need an explanation, and that's what I'm here for. And so let's take a look. The best way to do this, right, if we're looking at, let's label this triangle 1 and 2, first of all. So the one on the left is triangle 1, the one on the right is triangle 2. Um, the, the best way to, um, to to identify these corresponding parts of these corresponding triangles is to have kind of like a reference point, almost like if you're looking at a map. Um, having a reference point is a good way to kind of situate yourself to where you are on the map. And so, in this case, what the the side we're gonna the thing we're gonna use is actually this uh, right angle. That's gonna be our reference point. So, if we're looking at that um, right angle, the shorter side compared to that right or relative to that right angle is side AB. Right? That's the shortest side relative uh, to that right angle. Um, if we look at triangle number two, we'll see that uh, according to that same right angle, the shorter side relative to that is, is side DE. And so what we can say is that AB corresponds to, to segment or side DE on triangle number two. Uh, and the same can be said with, uh, with side BC. Yeah. If side BC is the is the longer side relative to the right angle um the on the other triangle the side relative to the right angle uh that is longer than the shorter side is going to be side e f and so <clears throat> um those are the, the two and then lastly the, the only thing that's remaining is the hypotenuse and so uh, by the way the hypotenuse is always a side that is across from the right angle and so in this in the case of tri triangle one the hypotenuse, or the side across from the right angle, is si uh, side AC or segment AC, and that's going to be corresponding to the uh, on triangle two. It's going to be corresponding to side DF, which is also across from uh, our reference point, uh, the right angle. So uh, AC is corresponding to DF, and in the same line, we we can say the same thing about uh, about the angles, and so. Um, if we're looking at angle A, which is the one adjacent to uh, or next to um, uh, next to the shorter, the shortest side relative to the right angle B, uh, we're going to say it's, it's similar to D, right? We're, we're going to say this angle right here is corresponding to this side on D, right? And so um, there's that, and then. Uh, B has the right angle, and so that's going to correspond to angle E on the other triangle that has a right angle. And then lastly, C is the pointy end here. In this case, it's going to be relative or corresponding to angle F. And so um, on this last part here, you're just repeating what we just wrote. We're, we're writing the congruency statements or the congruence statements. There are six of them because there's three sides and three angles. And so all you really have to do, and I, let's change color just for fun, is say AB or side AB is congruent to side DE, side BC is congruent to side EF, and side AC is congruent to side DF, and the angles as well. Angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E, and lastly, angle C is congruent to angle F. And if you're wondering again where I got all this, well, I, well, I just copied all those down here basically. Okay. To explain one, I'll let you read on your own. It's an ex explanation of of how to do mo a lot of this and, and identify angles and such. Um, we're going to jump to uh, your turn on um, the on page 46 in, in this credit. Um, so if you want to go ahead and read the exp explain part and just pause the video and come back, uh, feel free to do that. If you're back from reading explain one, uh, we're going to jump into this uh, your turn question number one first. We're told that ABC or triangle ABC is... <clears throat> congruent to uh, triangle DEF. And so we just have to be able to identify the, the parts of the triangle in this case. And so um, if we look at triangle ABC, we can see that um, one of the sides is clearly the shortest. And and um, yeah, I guess you could try to 
take a ruler and measure it if you want, but um, to my eye, AB is the shortest side. And so I'm going to find the reference point on the other triangle. DE happens to be the shortest side as well. And if I had to compare, I would say that either mm, AB, or sorry, AC or BC, between ABC and BC, that BC is the longer side. And so if I find the longer side, it's on the other triangle, it's going to be over here. And um, and FD is going to be compared to AC. So um, we also have some information that's missing, right? So for example, the shortest side is going to be 2.6 on this triangle. The longest side is going to be 3.7. And again, it's because I got that information from the other triangle. The angle that's missing, or so the side that's missing in the first triangle is, of course, 3.5, which I get from here. Okay, and then let's fill in the angles, right? Um, the angle that's between 2.6 and 3.5, or in this case, is going to be 73 degrees. So I'm going to put 73 degrees here. The angle that is between 3.7 and 2.6, or 3.7, 2.6, in this case, is going to be 65. 66, 65 goes there, and this is the only one that's left, 42. Angle C is 42. And so let's let's label all the corresponding sides. Like we said, side AB is going to be congruent to side DE. And then side BC is going to be congruent to side EF. And lastly, side AC is going to be congruent to side DF. And then corresponding angle, let's say angle A is uh, congruent to angle D. Angle B is congruent to angle E. And angle C is congruent to angle F. Okay. So, there we go. Um, let me see. And the side lengths are as follows. And um, let me see. I think. Or are we doing that first question? Uh, yes, sir. Indeed, we are. So, um, there's that first question down. Let's jump to question two. The following figures are congruent. Find the measure of the following. So, uh, again, this requires a little bit of 3D spatial reasoning, but you can clearly see that for in uh, in both of these quadrilaterals, that there's an interesting side here. This side compared to this side. Um, right, this one is shorter than this one. This first side is shorter than the second one. And so. In the same way, we see something very similar here, right? So what we can, I can, what we can kind of conclude is that this one is 16 because this one is 16, and then let's uh, see if this one is 21, then this one is 21 as well, right? And let's fill in the missing pieces. The si the angle between 16 and 21 is 136 here. And what are we missing? We're missing this side. OP is going to be 39 because it's to the left of the 16. Uh, if we're going clockwise, that is. And then lastly, this is 51, since it's uh, counterclockwise over from the, the side that's 21 kilometers. And so um, we have everything we need, I think. Or, or the angle, we're missing the angle. Angle V is going to be the angle that's in between the 16 kilometer side and the 39 kilometer side. And we're told here that it's 112. 112, and then OP. Uh, we we found already OP is 39, uh, 39 kilometers. That is, we should keep the units uh, similar there. And then lastly, ST is going to be 21 kilometers.